So welcome back everyone, Mike here. Kind of a rainy evening here in Pennsylvania. I was just out in the woods working on that tower blind that I'm building. Came back over here to the house and I started catching up on some comments from some different videos over the last week or two. Uh, we do our best to read all the comments. Uh, we respond to as many as we can. We really enjoy the interaction, so keep that up. You know, let us know where you're from, how things are going in your part of the world. We love it. It's been a lot of fun. But anyway, I got back to video number 408, and it's called Pressure Tension Danger. This tree has it all. Now, if you remember, if you follow our channel, that was a big oak tree that fell down. Uh, the whole top went down into the pond, and I had a little mini excavator down there, and I was cutting that tree up, dragging it out of the pond, and it worked out really well. But I think what happens is some people will watch a video, and they just kind of skip through it, or they're busy, you know, they're doing something else, and they don't hear some of the things you say, they don't see some of the things that you do, or they just don't pay attention, and they catch little bits and pieces, and they think they have it all figured out. And then they get to the comments. They won't watch the video, but they'll spend a lot of time on some of the comments. Let me read some of these to you. Uh, Martin's Tree Works, he says, Someone needs to teach you how to properly buck logs into lengths for milling. You obviously are very green and have not a clue. When a log is hanging in the air, then it's imperative to put a slight cut up underneath the underside. And he goes on and on. And I agree with Martin. That's normally what I would do. But when I have, and like I said, I'm not an expert. I've said it a hundred times before. And like I always say, I am by no means a professional. But when you've got a 15 or 18 inch you know, red oak log that goes out another 60, 70, 80 feet, suspended, you know, nothing supporting it at all, you cut into the bottom of that thing, I don't care if you go an inch, that saw is not coming out. I'm not trying to save those branches for saw logs or anything like that. It's all firewood and it worked out very well. Luigi Christine, Christina, Christ, Luigi says, but cut shorter pieces, no, from the top and not from the base. And you have also rendered useless a beautiful part of the trunk that is commercially useful, the one that has become exhausted. I'm exhausted reading that comment. No, Luigi, that piece that he's talking about had a crack in it, which I mentioned when the tree hit the ground, you know, a big Y, those oaks have so much weight, they kind of split up on the top. I even mentioned the crack, showed the crack. You should be able to see that, but this tree has a big split in it right here and explain what was gonna happen there. So I didn't waste anything, it'll be some good firewood. But I did save a really nice butt log that'll be a perfect saw log. Flying Tiger, he says, tree lying on the ground makes pressure zone and tension zone equals life threatening at a big risk of death to your clip now. At 514, and no, you don't know what you do and what you bring to the people here, and it's it not funny. This is a kind of Russian roulette with a good German chainsaw. It is a good German chainsaw, Flying Tiger. At 514, this is what Flying Tiger saw. This is what Flying Tiger didn't hear. It's gonna pop, and I mean, it's gonna come up in air a good three or four feet. Dave Calvo, he says, when cutting down trees, rule number one, start at the branch tips and work your way back. If you had done this, you would not have had any issues. And yes, I do this for a living. Two things on that. Dave Calvo missed this part. Normally what I do, I'll start at the very end, kind of work my way back, taking weight and stress off as I go, just kind of whittling away at it till you get to some manageable pieces back here. This tree I cannot do that with because it's suspended out over top of the pond. So the only way I could do that would be if I were to be in a boat with a chainsaw above my head and that wouldn't end well at all. So I'm not gonna do that. And number two, just because you do something for a living doesn't make you great at it. I mean, I don't want to offend anyone when I say that, but uh, it's the truth. Man, I worked heavy highway construction for years. I was a blaster. I saw dozer operators that have been doing it for 20 years that could barely hit the ground with the blade. That's the truth. So there are some people really good in their profession. Others aren't. You no need to tell me that's what you do for a living. Just saying, Dave. Somebody else. How come you didn't go to the end of the tree first to release some of the stress before you junk it up? You should notch the bottom of the log when it's in the air and will prevent splitting as I saw in the video. So he missed 
the part about it having a big crack in it. He missed the part about it being hung out over the pond. He missed a lot. You should be able to see that, but this tree has a big split in it right here. Suspended out over top of the pond. Somebody else said, I started watching when the big oak barber chaired, so he missed everything I said before that. It split because the compression wasn't relieved first. Yeah, and it seemed you didn't know why. I did know why. It's going to pop, and I mean, it's going to come up in air a good three or four feet. Always cut the compression side first. We went over that. A little advice for the future. Make a relief cut from the bottom first. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Matt Walker, proof that just because you have a camera and a chainsaw does not mean you have a clue how to use either. Why didn't you make the cuts on the branches higher in the tree before you cut the trunk where it split? Went over that several times. You know what, I'm just gonna play the first part of that video right now where I kind of explain how I was gonna approach that and uh, what I thought it was gonna do and what it did. But anyway, I'm gonna get started on this tree. Now normally a tree like this, and like I always say, I am by no means a professional, uh, but normally what I do, I'll start at the very end, kind of work my way back, taking weight and stress off as I go, just kind of whittling away at it till you get to some manageable pieces back here. This tree I cannot do that with because it's suspended out over top of the pond. So the only way I could do that would be if I were to be in a boat with a chainsaw above my head and that wouldn't end well at all. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, what I am gonna do is start about 30 feet to my right and this tree has a split in it. There's a Y out there and where that Y is just on this side of it, there's a big crack. You could, I showed that in a video the other day. So what I'll do when I start cutting down into that thing, it's gonna pop. And I mean, it's going to come up in air a good three or four feet and the whole rest of that tree will go down into the pond, which it's going to be hard to get out of there, but I got a secret weapon for that. I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, but that's what's going to happen. So as long as I'm standing on this side of it, right over here, it's going to pop up in the air, lay down in the pond, and it'll take all that weight and stress off. Now, the fun part of this video, Bucking Billy Ray. If you're not a subscriber to his channel, you need to check it out. Uh, this guy's from up in British Columbia somewhere, I think. He's fantastic with a chainsaw. He runs a bunch of older, uh, you know, vintage saws. He really knows what he's doing. He's a professional. I'm not. I say that all the time. By no means a professional. By no means a professional. By no means a professional. But what I really like about Bucking Billy Ray is just his attitude, his passion, he's kind. He's just energetic. He just, uh, it just puts you in a good mood when you watch the guy. It really does. Uh, anybody that's passionate about what they do and puts into work, they have my utmost respect. I say that all the time, and that is Bucking Billy Ray. But what I would like is for you guys to go over there, comment on one of his videos, because I don't know how to get a hold of the guy. I want him to watch this video in video 408 from start to finish. You know, don't skip through it. And tell me what I did wrong, tell me what I did right, and I will definitely take advice from Buck and Billy Ray because the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, so anyway, get a hold of him, get him over here, check out his channel and subscribe. Uh, super cool guy, super good videos, and uh, I think that's about it. It's just getting dark here right now, so I'm going to head in the house and call it a day. But anyway, like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.